The Broken Inheritance of the Unremembered by Zach Standridge. Chapter 1 These inconsequential diatribes are of no use, Laroque lamented. Why? Ropod replied. Longing, suffering, these things go hand in hand, Baru observed. Watch. Hearken to the horizon. Let the rays of the sun warm your desperate soul, Corvern was concerned. I do not believe I have a soul, is what he said. What does it matter, I asked. No, it does not, Baru stated. What does matter, I asked, yet again. Opinions of others, Laroque answered. Money, Ropod recommended. Family, Corvern carried on. No, 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 for you see, I have none of these things, and I never will. Chapter 2 This isn't for you. Don't read or listen to the conversation any further. Are you happy? This is not for you. Do you know the truth? Perhaps. Perhaps not. Abysmal revenant of my broken foundation. Cursed existence, defamatory requisite, cruelty of the endless existence, ungratified. For those of us that have no family, for those of us that have no home, for those of us in torment and despair, what then? Endless repetition, earth and water and air and life, sending the molecules into the void from which there is no return. You have no comprehension of the suffering when you miss everyone in your life. And the truth is, they do not miss you. For those of us here at the bottom, this is a treatise for you to identify with. While I cannot fix your broken soul, your tormented heart, your meaningless life, I can give solace in the fact that I too have a broken soul, a tormented heart, and a meaningless life. Whining and mincing and complaining, why do you concoct and enact such melodrama, such hysteria? Must one be so histrionic? Laroque leered. For what such purpose is one in life if not to become part of the whole? Surely you must have friends, Corvern feigned concern. No, I say on your behalf and mine. Abysmal to be certain, but there must be one whom is attracted to you. Surely you must have a wife, or husband, or betrothed, a kindred spirit, Rilpod was reaching. Again, I say, where is the proof? What contact has been made? Whom pursues me? No, I answer on your behalf, mine as well. For family, what say you, Brew asked. Take part in this conversation no further if you have friends, family, a life partner, a betrothed. I speak to you and you alone. You whom are alone. Take heed, for in your suffering, I suffer as completely. Chapter 3 You will see yourself in me when you see that you've quit drinking, tried to make amends, and a decade of sobriety leaves you with the sucking vacuum of nothingness. Emptiness. You will recognize yourself in me when you hear me say that you know true loneliness. You have come to find comfort in solitude because it is all you have known. You'll see yourself in the mirror of these words when you truly know what it means to never be given a second chance by anyone or anything. But life is suffering. Suffering is life. Every dog has his day. And if you work hard, have a positive attitude, try to be a good person, hey! Everything will be fine, Corvern advised complacency. Show me proof, I say, for you will finally see yourself and your misery reflected back by these very words when you hear, I know you. If you're still listening to the conversation, then you are alone. No one cares about you. You've been denied basic support structures by life itself. These are the words of a desperate man, and mistake not a disparate words for desperate actions, for little stands between desperate words and disparate deeds, but the veil of attempted civility and morality, which is itself abstract at best. 
Gossamer thin is the veil between insane words and violent action. Let's all calm down, Ropod recommended. Why? Did the revolutions which freed humanity over the course of hundreds of years across multiple civilizations occur because we all calmed down? Again, I answer both for you and myself. No. Chapter 4 So what the fuck happened? Chapter 5 Endless days turn to endless nights, and you cannot trust anyone but yourself. If resources are collapsing, if society has turned meaningless, if the dwindling light of life becomes an arcane eclipse of existence itself, then you are here. We whom live beyond the structures, you are one of us. You are as me and I as you. We are the forgotten, those unremembered. Those discarded and of no further value. The sickening, awful, maggot-gagging truth of life is that we are part of this worthless system. All has been predetermined. Even your reading and listening in right now. But this predetermined plan is at a cost. For those of us whom have to pay the toll. For those of us whom there is no solace. I find myself staring at you across this divide and I know how you feel. No, you cannot. Madness and preposterous depression gain nothing, Veru vehemently denies. Agreed, anger is more useful than despair. Speculation on the politics and religion of this entire planet support the argument that if any of us are left behind, forgotten, miserable due to the circumstances beyond our control, then should this travesty not end? It isn't the place of the many to judge the few whom have inherited, finagled, swindled, lied, enslaved, raped, and tortured to gain their hoard of blood money, Laroque denies. No, says all-world government and all-world religion. We must always have homelessness, hunger, need, for if people are happy, then the 10% cannot effectively control the 90%. If you have gotten this far, then you are like me. You are capable of seeing the ultimate truth in all things because you are, one, brilliant, and two, unloved. So you find yourself with no one to speak to, no one to lean on, no one to ask for help, no one to listen, no one to care, no family, no friends, no kids, no lover, no betrothed. Chapter 6 How now can we find peace in this? How do I proceed? What do I do? Self-delusion being a byproduct of evolution, one will inevitably and invariably always gravitate towards self-aggrandizement. You've had the depressed days followed by the ecstatic mornings. You've felt you had a destiny, a purpose, that there was a plan for you. You used to feel you had a voice. Then things turned. Somewhere along the way, you lost everything. And despite years of your best efforts, you cannot recover anything. Nothing. Nothing at all. These broken shards are a reminder of who you once were. A reminder that not only can you never trust anyone, you cannot trust yourself. The sickening loneliness can only serve one purpose then. So what is this purpose, now that we have nothing? This most uncomfortable question has an answer. Fact is, that those of us with nothing, have nothing to lose. And we are many. And we are coming. Chapter 7 The group stared out at the endless scale of existence. Why, they lament gazing through the mist of time and cerulean clouds which whisper the deadly truths of the above, there is nothing here for you. Across time and space I gaze at you, and I know you, for I am a part of you. I am the part of you that cannot succeed, despite all attempts. I am the portion of you that you recognize when you feel the thumb of God crush you down while all surrounding you flourish. I am the contempt you feel for existence. I feel it. 
for I am part of existence as well. Having nothing does not make you righteous, Rue said. Having nothing does not make you wise, Laroque agreed. Your opinion does not matter to me. Never will. For I answer on your behalf. Having everything does not make you righteous. Having everything does not make you wise. Chapter 8 This is the bitter inheritance of the unremembered. This is your inheritance and mine. With the emptiness comes the vacuum to be filled with whatever you wish. Rage, delusion, violence. For in this seemingly ever-elusive world of rules and regulations and bloodshed and tyranny, we must not give in to the warm embrace of divine complacency. Anger is tiring, but it is all we have left. First of all, just because you are alive doesn't mean you get a happy ending. Our humanity has endless evidence and countless, nameless, dead corpses strewn across the epochs. You can easily be among them. Or not. The choice is yours. How angry can you get? Assume you will never have anything again. There is no eventual acceptance of this fact. You will always be pinging back and forth between denial and bargaining, but the anger will always remain. Our inheritance for this broken, twisted, sad wreckage of a world. The dawn no longer offers any joy. You find no beauty in anything. And this is truly sad because you used to love beauty. You used to love gazing upon beautiful things. Well, no longer. The crimson shade of rage has settled upon your countenance, and that which you see now is all reflected in red. Food offers no comfort. You don't drink. No one to talk to. Alone. But it is not the fait accompli, the very definition of life, to find happiness and joy due to suffering, Corvern demanded. Why? Chapter 9 You are in a prison. You will remain trapped here with me. In anger. In solitude. In that most delicate and wonderful expression of existence, love will not find you. Love will pass you by. Friends will turn their back. Family will grow weary and distant. Until at last, you are here. You are in a prison. You will remain trapped here with me. In anger. In solitude. You shouldn't tell anyone. The end. Narrated by Leilani Brothers.